The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 817. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today we have another amazing woman from the Asian Women Who Boss Up book, another amazing author. She's actually known as the queen of performance and productivity, and I'm so excited to have her on today to share some tips and her wisdom. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Sabrina Runbeck. Sabrina, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Yeah, and thanks, Gina, for having me on. And thanks, everyone, for listening in. Thanks for choosing us for spending the, a few minutes with us. I am a heart and lung surgery uh, PA uh, in the U.S. in Houston, one of the biggest medical centers in the world. And I have a background in neuroscience and public health. So I already started my journey as a, uh, a immigrant from China. My mom actually was in the U.S., so I flew myself out here. But soon after, she she actually got into a car accident. Unfortunately, I realized that, you know, tough times, so you, you you just be resourceful, do something for yourself. So at the time, I remember even when I was uh, in a teenager, just turned 12, I was going to flea markets every weekend just to sell pots and pans. But that also taught me a good lesson of working hard and be very clear on my goal. So after I got two master's degrees, a medical degree, and finally got to one of the best heart and lung center hospital, I felt that, wow, I actually made it. And then it's a great place. But also the stress sets in of how competitive things are. And you get to keep going. You have to show up. Your patient don't stop. They don't take holidays. People don't get stop getting sick just because. And then to the point where I felt one morning just exhausted, barely eight o'clock. My body is feeling weak. My hands are cramping. And I had a fever, 101 degrees. So at that moment, it wouldn't have been so bad if I was home. But I was actually in the OR suite. My hands are inside a patient's chest. I'm trying all that I have, the energy and my mental focus just to finish that heart surgery. And our cases usually last at least four hours. So my nurse even noticed like, oh, Sabrina is not doing well. So let, let's help her. And they were passing day calls and cough drop under my mask just to keep me going. And the next morning, I woke up feeling fever didn't go away. I'm still in night nice sweat. I had to admit my, to myself that I got to do something else, not just dragging this out. So I finally called my boss. His response was, Sabrina, you couldn't tell me this sooner? And now that felt like a stab in my own heart. Oh, wow. Like we're always thinking about what other people need, no matter which field you're in. Are you aware you're so considerate of other people, but are we doing it to ourselves? I really consider about who we're close to, our coworkers. So that's the moment I had to say, hey, you know what? I got to take a better ownership on my life. I can't just complain and think about it's all the external problem. It's not the system problem. It's my problem of not saying no, of saying yes to the things that actually distract me, cost my sanity and precious time. So yeah, that's why I went back to my root in neuroscience and public health, really come up with these simple systems. How can we fell back in love with the career that we built, we worked so hard for. And now think about the, just the stress part because we're all hard workers. We want to enjoy what we want to do. We want to get to the next level. So yeah, I believe we don't have a burnout with stress management issue. We have a boundary and leadership issue. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And that's so true, especially as Asian women, we've been taught to just, you know, keep serving others, don't put ourselves first. And that's how we get burnt out and, you know, go through these issues that we go through because we feel like we always have to please others before we please ourselves. So I'm glad you're able to do that and help others take care of themselves first so that they can have the best productivity ever. And how does the model minority myth hurt Asian women as a whole? I think we're from even Asian males, they see us the cute, the nice, the sweet, the smart ones to good in be in school. But there are also the moms that take care of everything. Now I think I'm so good at being that good Asian girl who's so dedicated, who get everything done. But I'm also a good American rebel. I go against the norm, and I can't compromise who I am as a 
than who I want to be. The sense of self is not selfish; it's actually honoring who we are as a person. Thanks for sharing that. And why is creating a strong representation of Asian women so important for you? There's not enough message out there to for Asian women empowerment. If you think about women in any type of leadership position, and there's already a shortage.、And、specifically in medicine, we are one out of six in C level director of programs, and Asian in even just medical school, and there are about twenty percent. So yes, we're not doing poorly, but we're also not standing out as well as a community. So for all of us who has a voice, we got to find it, and we actually need to talk about our value system. And one of the most common problem I have when my client come to me is, well, I feel like I couldn't ask for the promotion. I when I got hired to the hospital, I feel like that's that's fair. That's fair. I, I I shouldn't expect too much. I have a job that's already good enough. Instead of your value, if you already are go getter, you are doing a lot more. Project research and leading the team, even without the title, would you think your time actually worth more than other people? Then we should be appropriately compensated. I totally agree, and especially as women, Asian women, we feel like we're never enough, or we just feel like we don't deserve that raise or that promotion. And if you never ask, the answer is always no. And so sometimes we just got to go out there and ask because you never know you could get that you could get that promotion, even if you ask. For a five thousand dollar raise, and they said we'll give you four. That's still four thousand dollars more than by not asking. So it's always really a great thing to ask. And I know it's scary because we're so afraid of rejection. But if you change how you see things and think of what could go right, then you should just go for it. Right? Ask for that promotion. Ask for that position. Because the more women leadership we have, the more representation, the more other people can see what's possible. And how does it feel being that representation for so many Asian women in the world? It's a sense of proud. It's a sense of giving back to the root of the culture of we are not just known by these stereotypes because there's a good and bad in any culture, any part of the world. So why don't we highlight our strength, our inner self more, and empower that part, right? And stop talking about all the things that. Doesn't work, and the things that that could have hold us back. So that's why I'm so excited about this book with so many amazing women to call us. How can we truly boss up as Asian women? Thanks for sharing that.、It's、so true, right? Most people think Asian women are just one-dimensional human beings, but we're so mul- multifaceted, and we just need to go out there and tell them, like, "Hey, we're not quiet and submissive. We can be a doctor, we can be a lawyer, we can be a CEO, we can be a pilot, we can be anything we put our mind to." And so, I'm glad you were able to share that. And can you share one reason as to why every Asian woman needs to read this book? The reason that every woman need to read this book it doesn't matter if you're a young girl or people who are already achieved their career success. In my training in positive psychology and neuroscience, we have an equation of a true success is equal to your knowledge base plus positive quotient. So knowledge is our IQ, all the degrees, emotional intelligence. So many people are talking about that, right? That EQ. But just have all this knowledge. The more book you read, the more program you study, and more skill you develop. They're just resources. If you don't know how to extract the right thing and do the right thing, you can be so busy doing the wrong thing and never get you to anywhere. Or you can have all this high moment, ooh, promotion here, new project here, and getting a bonus. But how long does that happiness last? They don't last long for most people because what we're missing is your positive quotient. What that means is we have nine different sabotaging tendencies. If we don't recognize what our negative tendencies, such as judgment, controlling, avoidance, pleaser, then we think ourselves as, oh, we're already doing the right thing. We can't see our own blind spot. But once you recognize the blind spot, your sabotaging tendency, then how well do you know to use these neural remodulating tools to pivot yourself from the stuck? To the empowerment state of empathy, 
creative innovation, right? And then you can truly move forward in life, no matter what roadblock or unforeseen troubles you're facing. So that's why we need to read this book. All the women in this book have come through something in their life, and they are learning a lesson, and they're teaching this lesson inside this book. And we are so deep. There's so many different career within this book, and so it gives inspiration for those young ladies who are. Are thinking about what they want to do when they grow up, but more importantly, how do they want to live? And for those who are established, they can. And see that life are full of opportunities. No matter what age they are, they can truly empower themselves to go to the next level. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Sabrina, what can readers gain from reading your story? I go a little bit deeper into how I was raised in a good family, single mom. I'm the only child, and then to my journey of struggling as I thought. The only way I can make it is just keep go go go, and that concept of always on in our culture, right? Both from being Asian or even just a, this typical Western American culture of you, you have to make it, you have to prove to yourself, but we don't have to, right? And there's always a clarity if we don't know our aim, how we want to live. We constantly doing things just to check off that box. Of oh I I got that degree I got that good job that should mean I'm happy or that should give me fulfillment when I get somewhere but most of the time it's not because we're chasing a unknown so I think people will truly enjoy my story of it's not just medicine it can be anything、uh, applicable we can truly bring back that joy by knowing. Ourself empower our mind, bring back that mental immunity, what I call them, and reboot our energy to get to amazing place that you so all deserve. Thanks for sharing that, and it's so true.、Right? I think in this crazy world, we always measure success by how much money we make, the cars we own, the big house, the white picket fences. But really, success is just being able to live life on your own terms, and it can be like. Just living off an island, if you want, by yourself. If you're truly happy, then go ahead and do that because that's how success is. And we need to learn to celebrate every success we have. Because if not, we're always going to be, you know, thinking, "Oh, I haven't hit that yet, so I'm not successful." But you know, just being even on a podcast is a success, or learning your first. You know, trying to figure out how how something works. That's a success on its own. It's so important to do that. And most people learn through other people's stories and experiences. So I'm I'm sure the readers will be excited to read your story. And would you be able to share one boss up tip for our listeners today? Yeah, I'm so excited for this. So this is my slogan: You have to say no to almost everything, so you can say heck yes to the only things that truly light you up in life. Awesome! I love that tip, and it's so important, right? Especially as Asian women, we feel like we have to say yes to everything that we don't create these boundaries. And boundaries are so important because without them, like we're gonna get burnt out, we're gonna get fatigued, we're gonna get tired, we're gonna not feel most confident. So great slogan! And Sabrina, can you share with our listeners where they can pre-order a copy of the book, and if you have any social media profile links you want to share to the audience? Yeah, that'll be awesome. So definitely grab a, a book.、Uh, we're on Amazon, and you can also check out my website for the book. It's sabrinarumback.com forward slash book. And for anybody who are interested, I am active on Instagram and LinkedIn, and you can go to my handle, just Sabrina Rumback. And of course, I love connections. I love chatting with people like Sheena, who's an awesome person. I love to give and just having a dialogue and.、Uh, See how you can become that peak performer and save you at least eight hours out of your work, so you can get to do the things you love to do. So feel free to hit me up, connect with me. Go to sabrinarumback.com for slash blueprint if you want to chat. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Sabrina, you can also head on over to the Tao of Self Confidence dot com and search for Sabrina's name. Our show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Sabrina today for taking the time to share a little bit about her story, sharing her wisdom. So thank you so much, Sabrina. I'm really excited for this book to come out soon. Thank you so much, Sheena. Thanks, everyone. Yes, I can't wait for all of you to read it and then tell us all about what you thought about our book, our stories, and if it truly connect with you. And thank you so much for giving us your time. 
Awesome. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another Asian woman who boss up author who's going to share her wisdom and a little bit of her story. So tune into the next episode. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. You can order your copy of Asian Women Who Boss Up Book by visiting our website at thetowofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. 